Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So when last we met, we were discussing freedom of speech and the Bible on freedom of speech, John Stuart Mill's On Liberty. We just finished the introduction and we discussed the harm principle mostly and whether some people are adults or not, or whether the definition of adults is those people that have thick skin and can handle freedom of speech and sort of the limits of it. But now we get to chapter one, which is really chapter two. It's a chapter that comes after the introduction. And we get to one really great, great quote and a whole bunch of arguments as to why freedom of speech is good. Previously, he was just trying to demarcate between that which you can and can't say. Now he's saying, of oh, that which you can say, this is why it's good. The chapter is titled, On Thought and Discussion. So thought is what goes on in your head. I think a million, billion, thousand crazy things a day, and I'm sure you do too. I don't discuss them all, thank God. But he also breaches over into then past thought and into discussion on this chapter. And we come up with one of the most wonderful quotes of all time. And really, this is the only thing you need to remember. If you're going to remember one thing about uh, freedom of speech, this is it. If all of mankind minus one were of one opinion, mankind would be no more justified in silencing that one person than he, if he had the power, would be justified in silencing all of mankind. The peculiar evil of silencing the expression of an opinion is that it is robbing the human race, posterity, as well as the existing generation, still more than those who hold it. If the, right, if the opinion is right, they are deprived of the opportunity of exchanging error for truth. If wrong, they lose that which is almost a, as great a benefit the clearer perception and livelier impression of truth produced by its collision with error. I love that. I've always loved it since I first ever read this. That's the, that's the, thing, the first thing I've underlined that. That's why I understood that this book was a really great book. Even if what the person's saying is the stupidest thing in the whole world, and Barack Obama said this, let them keep speaking. It's just making you more convinced of your argument. Later in the chapter, he has to say, we're never going to get to absolute truth. That's for God and God alone. But what we might get is as good a conviction as we can possibly get so that we may act. Because if we don't act, then all of our labors and all of our obligations will go unfulfilled. Um, and so we've got to step forth at some point in time and act upon our opinions and discuss and then even like go further and take action. But only once you have an idea and then thoroughly discuss it with a range, wide range of people, which is what Twitter's really good for, or it used to be really good for, or it might be good for again. And then you can act with conviction. Maybe science gives you truth, but really it's discussion that gives you truth. Science may be physical truth. To go off into a tangent to a different philosopher, there's a guy, uh, Immanuel Kant, wrote Critique of Pure Reason. He, he does this thought, thought experiment, or at least he implies this thought experiment, which I'll do with you now. I bet you I can make every single one of you down that camera and everyone that ever watches this and anyone they'll ever meet and you'll ever meet and they'll, they'll, they'll ever meet, everyone that ever lives, I bet you I can make you think of the same thing, right? I'm going to hold up the answer behind this picture, behind this book, sorry, and when I'm going to reveal the book, I'm going to give you the answer and you'll all be thinking of it. Imagine a perfectly straight line in time and space. Now imagine a point off of that line. How many other perfectly straight lines can be drawn through that point that is perfectly parallel to the first line? You're all thinking the same thing. One, it's the only thing that can be. That's, that, and that's called synthetic a priori knowledge. And we yearn for this in society. You think of a triangle and it's exactly three sides and they all equal 180 degrees, all the angles equal, blah, blah, blah. And then you, th you can think of gender. There's exactly men and exactly women. And then you can think of like, a, I don't know, like um, right and wrong and good and evil and those things. And in our mind, in our synthetic a priori part of our mind using Gerstumpf for a reason, we can think of it. But the reality is that doesn't do us any good in life because everything's, there's no such thing as perfectly straight lines in, in the real world. God doesn't draw straight lines. Did Einstein say that? Someone said that. And so we're stuck with our flawed mortal opinions best thing to do is talk about them with someone talk about them with someone who's going to argue with you in good faith even if the first nine of ten people all agree on the presupposition i believe there's an obligation on the tenth person to take up an argument against it and here's why okay the rest of this chapter is mostly talking about christianity and socrates socrates died for truth and he outlived everyone in that era of time name someone else besides plato that was alive when socrates was alive see you can't can you and I don't know, maybe there's someone, but and the Christians got thrown to lions as he writes and Christianity conquered us all. So the defending of truth is a making the right argument. The proper argument is more powerful than anything. Ideas live forever. I think that's V for Vendetta or something, isn't it? Finally, we come to the conclusion of this chapter and it reemphasizes what the points of freedom of speech is, why they're good. We have now recognized the necessity to the mental well-being of mankind of freedom of opinion and freedom of expression of opinion on different grounds, which we will now briefly recapitulate. I'd have said conclude. First, if any opinion is compelled to silence, that opinion may, 
For aught we can certainly know be true. To deny this is to assume our own infallibility. So you can't deny another opinion because you believe that you're God if you do so. Secondly, though the silence opinion be in error, it may and very commonly does contain a portion of the truth. And since the general and prevailing opinion on any subject is rarely or never the whole truth, it is only by the collision of this adverse opinions that the remainder of the truth has a chance of being supplied. I agree. I think someone might call that a dialectic. And the third one is saying that even if the received opinion not only be not be only true, but the whole truth, unless it is suffered to be and actually is vigorously and earnestly contested, it will, by most of those who receive it, be held in the manner of a prejudice, pre, excuse me, prejudice, with little comprehension or feeling on rational grounds. Now that's a very John Stuart Mill's way of saying divine truths or these synthetic a priori truths or truths that are like a cultish person sort of chanting. We don't really believe them, even though they're right. If the person doesn't want to stand their ground and use common words and talk to you about it and listen to you and use examples and be able to explain it to you, you don't take it as a real rational truth. It's this kind of like scary and it's very woke sort of like the, the whole critical race theory that's going on right now. I don't know one person that understands that. I don't even know if James Lindsay does, to be honest. Everyone that's talking about it, they come across as a little bit of scary. So they're just chanting some sort of hymn that they know. So there are the arguments as to why freedom of speech is good. He does finish this chapter by saying you shouldn't be a prick about it. You should mind your P's and Q's and an argument is always better made when the, I think he says the orator or something isn't calling you a fucking prick as he's telling it to you. You should always be well-mannered and he appeals to everyone to be well-mannered as they make their discussions known. But nevertheless, even if you're not, you should be able to hear it. All right, I think got one more chapter coming on this. Freedom of speech, all important. One more chapter coming. Please hit like and subscribe and I, I got that next one coming out soon. All right, see ya. Bye.